Over the last seven months since COVID entered our consciousness, you've probably heard me talk about vitamin D. Well, the good news is study after study seems to verify exactly what I've been saying, that your vitamin D levels may be one of the most important factors in determining how you respond to a potential COVID exposure. You see, vitamin D is an integral part of our immune system, particularly for viral and respiratory illnesses. Now, we normally develop vitamin D innately through exposure to the sun, which is why vitamin D levels seem to decrease the further north or south away from the equator we get. But even in Florida, you know, the sunshine state, most of us, because the sun is so strong, tend to spend a lot of time indoors or covered up or, you know, wearing sunblock. And as a result, it's very common for our vitamin D levels to be de decreased compared to where they should be. This is really important because when your vitamin D levels decrease, so does your lung volume, while your risk of pneumonia increases, your risk of acute respiratory distress increases, your risk of a cytokine storm increases, and your risk of morbidity and mortality of, associated with COVID also increases. In fact, two studies published this week confirm that. One is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, and they talk about how people who are deficient in vitamin D have a 77% increased chance of developing COVID compared to people with sufficient levels. There's another study from the Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, really exciting stuff, that actually creates a treatment group comparing uh, vitamin D treated people versus a control group that is not treated with vitamin D. So what they did is they took hospital patients with COVID and they treated 50 of them with vitamin D and the control group just had the standard treatment. And what they found is in the group that was treated with vitamin D, only one person or a total of 2% of the entire group required care in the ICU. Whereas in the control group that did not receive vitamin D, 50% required treatment in the ICU. That is astonishing. Vitamin D is not only something that you can do in advance to strengthen your immune system and to improve your respiratory health, but it's also something that if you know somebody who is diagnosed, loading up on vitamin D may in fact be the difference between them having a mild or asymptomatic infection versus having a severe life-threatening infection. I think you're going to see more and more studies confirming what we've been talking about since this all started, is that our vitamin D levels are essential. Now, most people have never had their vitamin D tested. And if you have, you need to go back and actually look at the labs because most doctors assume that as long as you are above 30 nanograms per milliliter, what is essentially the difference between rickets versus no rickets, uh, that that's sufficient. Well, we know that for an appropriate or optimal immune function, that level should really be closer to 60 to 80. That's more than double. Now, in addition to getting tested and getting your levels actually assessed to figure out where you're at, uh, you can actually help boost your levels by just going out into the sun. Now, it's probably best to do this in the morning before the sun gets too strong or towards the end of the day when the sun starts to calm down and the, the UV rays aren't so bad that you get burnt. But getting out and exposing your skin to the, to the sun is really, it can really make a big difference. And if you're somebody who really can't do that, uh, make sure that you supplement with vitamin D. The Vitamin D Society recommends 1,000 IUs per 25 pounds of body weight, which means for a 100-pound person, you should be taking 4,000 IUs of vitamin D, preferably D3, by the way, because that's more readily absorbed by the body. Uh, and that may sound like a lot, but the truth is, based on how deficient we are as a society and by uh, how significant COVID can be for people with low vitamin D, I think it's certainly worthwhile. Now, for the record, if you have a young child that you're breastfeeding, studies seem to suggest that as long as mom is taking 6,400 IUs per day, that that is sufficient to protect baby as well. But 
I think I want to share this information because so many of us kind of have approached COVID in this helpless manner of just trying to hide and avoid exposure. And that's just not possible. But if you can do something to improve your health, right? If you can eat well, if you can get physical activity, get good sleep, supplement with vitamin D, get adjusted, you know, through chiropractic and help strengthen your immune response. All of these things will help make you less susceptible to all infections, not just COVID. So let's start making some better decisions and not only reducing our exposure, but also increasing our resistance so we can be healthier as a whole.